Now we're ready to look at acid-base balance, but in order to understand acid-base balance, we have to make sure we understand acids, bases, and pH, and that's the goal of this lecture. So starting with acids. Acids are molecules that release hydrogen ions, and since hydrogen ions are protons, we can think of acids are something that donates protons to the solution. So they're going to release hydrogens, or they're going to dissociate into hydrogen ions and an anion. An anion, remember, is a negative ion. So hydrochloric acid is a good example of a strong acid because it completely dissociates into hydrogen ions and chlorine ions. And those hydrogen ions then are the protons that the hydrochloric acid is donating to the solution. Uh, carbonic acid is a weak acid because it doesn't donate all of its hydrogen ions. It only donates some of them. So some of the Carbonic acid dissociates and becomes hydrogen ions and bicarbon ions, whereas some of the um, carbonic acid stays as carbonic acid and doesn't dissociate. So that makes it a weak acid. And the reasons why it's partially does that is just the characteristics of the acid and beyond, and the balance between those is beyond the scope of where we want to go with this. Now, bases are either molecules that release hydroxide ions. Or you can think of them as proton acceptors. That is, they take up the hydrogen ions and remove them from the solution. So think of sodium hydroxide as a strong base because it completely dissociates into sodium and hydroxide ions. And those hydroxide ions then are going to combine with um, hydrogen ions, or they're going to take up or accept those hydrogen ions or protons, and they'll form water. Whereas bicarbonates are considered weak bases because some of them will take up hydrogen ions and form carbonic acid, but some of them won't. So again, it's that balance between carbonic acid and bicarbonates um, and the characteristics of it and, that, and the equilibrium between those two, again, is beyond where we want to go with this. Just know that bases are going to be taking up protons, so they're going to be removing hydrogens from the solution and thereby neutralizing that acid. Now pH is a measure of the hydrogen ion concentration, and you can see here pH ranges all the way from 0 to 14, and as you move down the scale of that as it gets smaller and smaller numbers, you can see that the concentration of hydrogen ions increases. So anything above 7 is considered a base, whereas anything below 7 is considered an acid. Now our blood pH is normally 7.35 to 0.45, so anything that is below 7.35 is considered acidosis. Even though 7.35 is on the basic side, that's our norm, so anything below norm we're going to call acidosis. Anything above norm, that is 7.45 above, then that's alkalosis. Now our pH uh, is calculated using this formula. It's a minus the log of the hydrogen ion concentrations. Now what's that mean? Well, the log is just a way to take a concentration, the hydrogen ion concentrations, that's normally a curve, and straighten it out. And that's what we have here, this straight line. The negative just makes that into an inverse relationship so that it, that with decreasing pH, you have increasing hydrogen ion concentrations. Now, the fact that we have a log means that if you move one pH, we're actually changing the hydrogen ion concentration tenfold. So a drop from five to four in the pH scale means that we've increase the hydrogen ion concentration 10 times. A drop from 5 to 3 means we've increased the hydrogen ion concentration 100 times. Going 5 to 2 would mean a 1,000 time increase in hydrogen ion concentrations. And we can think of it the other direction too. If we go from 6 to 7, that's a decrease in hydrogen ions by 10 times. If we go 6 to 8, it's a decrease in hydrogen ions by 100 times. Or we could go 7 to 10 would be three a change in 3 on the pH scale, which means a 1,000 times of a decrease in hydrogen ion concentrations. 
Now, when we look at acid-base homeostasis, again, we want normal pH levels between 7.35 to 7.45. And related to that is going to be um, looking at the partial pressure carbon dioxide and the concentration of bicarbonates. So the partial pre pressure of carbon dioxide in our arteries, and that's what the small a stands for, is for arteries, we want a normal level to be between 35 and 45 millimeters of mercury. Any change in that may end up resulting in a change in pH. Also bicarbonates are going to influence pH. Our normal range is going to be between 22 and 26 milliequivalents per liter. Now arterial blood gases are going to then indicate acid-base balance. The partial pressure of the carbon dioxide, since that has to do with respiration, indicates the respiratory component of maintaining normal acid-base balance. The bicarbonate level is going to indicate what the kidneys are doing to help make sure acid-base homeostasis stays normal. So, And then, of course, the pH is the overall acid-base balance itself. So what you'll see as we go through these, we're going to look at CO2 levels and bicarbonate levels and the pH and therefore be able to determine any abnormalities in acid-base homeostasis. So here, first before we get into those imbalances, we want to look at the mechanisms that are responsible for maintaining pH and that's where we get into the buffers and the first type of buffers we'll look at is the chemical buffers.